I want to talk to you about this book today. It's a functional equation by B.J. Venkatshara. But before I do that, let me tell you a little bit about functional equation. When I first encountered it uh, in high school or maybe a little bit before that, it was a really fascinating subject because until that time, I was given equations, I was given functions and I had to analyze them. For example, when I did algebra, I was given linear equations, quadratic equations and I was supposed to solve for solutions of those equations. Maybe factorize the expressions or something like that. Then when I did calculus, I was again given functions but then I was analyzing functions using derivatives, using integrals and stuff like that. Now when I first encountered functional equation, the question was flipped. Now, some behavior of the function is given to me and I have to find what function has those properties. Think about it. Think about the flip. Earlier, I was given the function, like let's say fx equals to sine of x times e to the power x plus x square. I just made up the function. So I was given the function and maybe using calculus, I have to analyze the function. Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Is it periodic? Stuff like that. And even before that, I was given quadratic functions like fx equals to x squared plus 5x plus 7 or maybe in some weird scenarios I was given cubic functions by quadratics. Now when I study functional equations the question really is turned around. They are asking me well there is a function maybe there is a function which has these properties. Can you find out that function? And there can be more than one function which satisfies those properties. So, literally this is the first book where I encountered this concept. And then there is another book by Small which also has these concepts. And then later uh, there is a whole part of mathematics called differential equations which deals with these type of problems. What is the philosophy behind this? The philosophy is you know certain features, certain properties of the underlying function and you have to discover the function itself. So I'll tell you one of the introductory problems in this field of mathematics, in functional equations. It's fascinating. It says that there is a function, maybe there is a function which has this additive property that f of x plus y or let's say f of x1 plus x2 x1 plus x2 is in the parentheses f of x1 plus x2 is equal to f of x1 plus f of x2 so you add inside the function and you add, apply the function separately and then add you will get the same thing and it's also given that the input values, that is the x values, are all natural numbers. Are all natural numbers. Can you find what function is this? Turns out that there are infinitely many functions like that, but all of them are linear functions. That is fx equals to some constant times x. That's what a linear function is. In fact, instead of natural numbers as input, if you take integers as input, you change the domain of the function, you use integers as input, the answer remains same. Even if you use rational numbers, that is numbers which are ratios of two integers, if you use rational numbers as inputs, even then the answer remains same. That is, the functions, the only functions 
that work are f of x equals to some constant times x. Now things change when you are in irrational numbers. So not up to rational numbers, it's f of x equals to some constant times x. But when you allow irrational numbers to be inputs, you need some extra condition on the function. Maybe you have to say that the function is monotonically increasing. That is, you, as you increase the value of x, the output value, that f of x, is also increasing. Maybe you have to give this condition that the function is continuous at a certain point. So, if you impose these additional conditions, if you impose these additional conditions, then again, f of x is equal to some constant times x. And otherwise, there are some functions which you cannot really write down, but you can prove the existence of such functions, which are not constant times x, like f of x is constant, that's not what they look like. It's fascinating and it's very detail oriented. It's very, uh, you have to think like a professional mathematician when you are dealing with functional equations. And that is the part of this subject that I really like. That when you, and, and all of this is in this particular book, uh, Functional Equation by Venkat Shala, you can look into it and learn a lot from it. As, a, as an exercise, why don't you do the easy case? f of x plus y equals to f of x plus f of y and all the inputs are natural numbers show that f of x is equals to some constant times x if you can do it you can put a comment in the comment section there is one other part of mathematics that is deeply connected with this actually several parts of mathematics are but one other part that immediately comes to mind is group theory. So in the mathematical olympiad program Satchinta, we include some of those ideas as well because it tells you where these beautiful problems are coming from. For example, in this particular case, this was known as a Cauchy's functional equation, the function with features like additive features f of x plus y equals to f of x plus f of y. In group theory language, this is known as a homomorphism, group homomorphism. And if you once you start seeing the same topic that you see in functional equations in a little one step up higher from the group theorist's point of view, and you can do that even at school level, you should do that even at school level, if you want to have a broader perspective, then you then a new world sort of opens up. And you see different features of the homomorphisms in group theory in the functional equation questions. So it's a lovely subject. You will definitely enjoy it. Keep on trying the problems and this book will be very helpful. And I recently, I think Gunjan, Gunjan Agarwal, one of our previous students and uh, now an INMO awardee, EGMO awardee, she gave a talk on a very beautiful subject called geometric functional equations. I will put a link in the description for that. You can also check that out. All right. Uh, stay well, stay happy and keep on doing beautiful mathematics. I will see you in the next video.